Hello everybody, welcome back. Um, have you all got a nice hot drink? I know I certainly have. Um, just to ask a answer a quick question, CBD points, someone asked about this three for today. I mentioned at the beginning, but I know some people join a bit late. So three points for today, but only if you've been listening um, because Richard and all of us will be testing everyone, won't we Richard, to make sure they've been listening. Yeah, we will now. Cool, oh, yeah. Very, very testing us. We like, we like doing a test, don't we? Yeah. Um, just a quick reminder for everyone who goes with, uh, you've just seen a link to the, the Mind charity, like I mentioned, so any donations would be amazing. Um, and yeah, Richard, today, bed bugs. We're talk there's lots of bed bugs going on in the news at the moment as well, isn't there? Yeah, yeah, it's very poignant at the moment, Matt. So I'm going to try and share my screen. Fabulous, you do that. I'll just stay here for a second, just to give you the heads up that it's all going yeah, good. Yeah, you could, and then I just need to go into percent mind. Is that going into slides? Is, is it there now? Uh, no, not yet. We can just see your, uh, we can see all your slides nearly. Lovely. Right Lovely. There. Oh, there. there we go. Fabulous. Sorted. Right. Technology. right. Thanks ever so much, Matt. Hi, everybody. Um, so I'm going to do early bed bug detection. So I'm actually quite excited about this because I've got a new bit of innovation to share with you. So our agenda today, we're going to look at the life cycle of the bed bug. We can look at the exponential growth. We could look at rapid detection for bed bug management. We can look at destruction methods and the future of bed bug detection. And then we're going to do the question and answer. So the life cycle of the bed bug, our bed bug um, exhibits what we call incomplete metamorphosis. So it's the egg nymph adult life cycle and our bed bug goes through what we call five in the star months so in order for our bed bugs to grow to go from a first thing start to a second second to third third to fourth fourth to fifth and then eventually an adult they need to feed on blood so our bed bugs being an ectoparasite feed on the outside of the host so they need to feed on us have a blood feed in order to then shed their exoskeleton and grow to the next level. So this whole life cycle in optimum conditions for the bed bug can take them as little as 37 days to go from an egg to an adult, which will then reproduce and start the cycle again. So exponential growth, when we're looking at the exponential growth, it's just showing what happens over time and how many sort of adults and nymphs we get. So this graph is basically showing the exponential growth. So at 30 days, it's quite low. When we get to 90 days, we're looking at 17 adults, 392 nymphs there. And then when we get to the 180 days, we've got a massive, massive population. So we've got 945 adults, 25,181 nymphs. So this is quite a major thing that could happen over 180 days if left unchecked, if left untreated. So when we're looking at rapid detection and the reasons for rapid detection and what we're actually seeing. So in this diagram here, we've got say a hotel building, We've got different rooms, different areas. And this is looking at how the bed bugs will interact with their environment, how they will move, how they will travel. So a bed bug on average can travel around 30 meters in one night to feed. When the females had a blood feed, she will lay one to five eggs, eggs a day. Um, and she can lay more than 500 eggs in a lifetime. So again, we've got this massive potential for growth and infestation. When we're looking at treating our hotels and stuff and how they move, there are loads of different ways that they can spread across rooms, hallways and from different floors. So they can come in on secondhand furniture, they could come in in luggage, and then once they're in the hotel, furniture can get moved from room to room. We've got all the different services, the conduits that they can travel in, and things like the way housekeeping is done. 
the hoovering, the housekeeping, is there a linen trolley on each floor? Is there different areas for linen storage? The hoovers, could they be used on an infested floor and then brought down to another floor where it's not infested? So there are loads of typical areas that can be there for cross-contamination from moving these insects from room to room. And detection of this is really, really important. Because as you know, some people will not react to bites. So people can be staying in rooms, getting bitten, there's no report of it, nobody knows any different. So what's the real cost? And we now live in the world of social media and reviews, and you're only as good as your worst review, aren't you? So we've got different things here. Oh my God, bed bug infestation in all rooms. So that probably did that hotel a lot of negative um, business there. It probably dropped a lot of their sales. Covered in bed bug bites. Bed bugs, bed bugs everywhere. So these are sort of things that can be posted on social media. And then it's what's the real cost of this? So you're going to get dissatisfied customers. And it's saying that a dissatisfied customer will tell between nine and 15 people about that experience. So again, there's a lot of word of mouth. But also when you think about it, if these things are posted, then nine to 15 people becomes a drop in the ocean. So again, around 13% of dissatisfied customers will tell more than 20 people. And then you've got the whole impact of a negative interaction with a business. And again, these are spread to twice as many people. People are twice as likely to talk about bad customer service experiences than about good experiences. And that's just a fact, isn't it? Bad news travels a lot quicker than good news does. 67% of people will spend money after getting recommendations from their friends and from online communities like Facebook and Twitter. Richard, and, just yeah. quickly, um, there's a few people put in chat that the audio is pretty um, bad on your side. You haven't got any headphones you can quickly stick in, have you? I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Well, I mean, leaning forward, actually, you lean forward, you might better. Lean forward, is that, is, that, is that better? I think that's a lot better. Yeah, and we can see you better as well because you're leaning oh, a bit more. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, we'll give, I'll, give I'll that a go. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, that folks. Thank you. Um, so yeah, I'll just redo this one. So dissatisfied customers are more likely to tell nine to 15 people about their experience. And then you, you think how that's magnified when it's posted online. Um, around 13% of dissatisfied customers are gonna tell more than 20 people. So that's more word of mouth. And negative interactions within a business are spread to twice as many people. People are twice as likely to talk about bad customer service experiences than they are about good experiences. And that's the thing, isn't it? Bad news always travels quicker than good news. So 67% of us will spend money from getting recommendations from friends. So basically referrals, isn't it? And also from looking at communities like Facebook and Twitter. And I'd say most of us will look up different sites and look references and reviews for things we're going to purchase or places that we're going to stay. So monitoring. So we've got different types of monitoring when we're looking for bed bugs. We've got what we call passive monitoring. So passive monitoring is where we're putting down a sort of trap, like a glue ball maybe, a blunder trap. So it depends upon the insect traveling across that insect location and getting stuck on it. We've also got what we call more active monitors. So when we're looking at active monitoring, we've got monitors that use attractions that use a lure. So these can be a chiromone lure, which is mimicking the food. We've got aggregation pheromones, which are what the insects naturally release so that they will come together in a group. We've also got sex pheromones as well that can be used in lures. Heat and carbon dioxide, again, will attract foraging bed bugs. It's all sorts of foraging biting insects, to be fair. Um, but that's the thing with it. 
these are all, again, very, very set, hit and miss because of stability. So there's different attractants that can be used at different times. Other active ways of monitoring as well are inspection. Doing a full physical inspection is active monitoring and detection. So the thing with our inspections is they're manual. They take a lot of time. They take really, really good training, a lot of good in-field training. And it's learning it's an, as you go along thorough. Where are the main areas we're going to find bed bugs? Where are the strange areas that we're going to get bug, bed bugs because of behavioural things? Because they're not always in the obvious areas around beds and headboards, are they? So that's important. And then it's infestation levels. Sometimes it's very, very hard to pick up the infestation because it's tiny numbers. There's not obvious spotting. You're not finding your shed nymphal skins. You're not finding your eggs and you're not seeing your live adults. At low levels, sometimes it can be very, very hard to detect. We then came to canine dog inspections. So again, there's a lot of training involved with the dog. It's a very costly process and it's availability as well because there's a limited number of people out there doing dog work. So it's again, another thing, another issue. So our new bit of innovation. So is true to text. You might have seen some stuff on social media about it. You might know somebody who's gone out and tried it. So it's the first scientifically proven tool to detect low level bed bug infestations. And you can do it within five minutes. So it's what we're saying is the future of bed bug detection. It's over 92% scientifically accurate. So it's 92.7 to be precise. You're getting immediate bed bug detection. It works especially well in areas where there's low level infestation, where the actual insects are really hard to detect. What it can do as well is give peace of mind and increase confidence. So this is an early detection tool. This isn't a verification treatment tool. It's an early detection tool. And the great thing about it is, if somebody comes and says, look, I've been bitten in this room, you do a thorough inspection, you can't find anything, but you can see that they've had a reaction or they've been bitten. Not only now you can do your true to text test, and within five minutes, you've got a scientific backup for your findings. So it's giving protection to the customers. It's helping their brand reputation. It's helping and impacting quickly picking up low level bed bug infestations before they become a problem. And the great thing of it as well is really easy to use and there is minimal training needed. So that's just the overview of our True Detects product. So we're now going to look at how to use it. And it's a very, very simple. Um, thing to use. I can use it, anybody can use it. So it's basically a swab test. So you have your true detect unit, you will remove the swab from the holder and use the soft end of the swab to collect the residues from the mattresses and other sleeping areas where bed bugs are going to be hiding, harboring and moving. So you're swabbing in long motions on these areas. So you're going to swab the back of your headboard your mattress seams and beading, beading and piping, in around your drawers, around eggs, the usual hard bridge areas. Once you've done this, you're then going to return the swab into the holder. So the soft end again is back in and down at the bottom, exactly the way you took it out. You then break the seal at the top, which releases the solution. Squeeze that in and that liquid will go down to the bowl. You're then going to gently agitate it, just give it a gentle shake. Don't go with Tom Cruise and cocktail, just a little gentle shake, just agitate it, and that will soak the swab. 
We then remove the white tip from the end of the swab. We squeeze the bulb, which is the dropper. We squeeze the bulb at the top, four drops will come out the dropper, and this goes into the results receptacle. You need to wait five minutes to see the results. So one line will indicate that there is no bed bugs find. If you get two lines on your CNT, as you can see on the right side of my image there, then you've got bed bug activity. So it's as simple as that. So how it works, basically the science behind it. So what it is, it's basic thin layer chromatography. So when our bed bugs are traveling around, they are secreting antigens. So what happens when you're swabbing, you're picking up those antigens. You're then putting it in to the analyte when you break it, and then through the Corelli reaction, it's going to test. So the analyte, which is containing your environmental sample, which will hopefully, if you've got bed bugs there, it will have in the proteins that are leaving behind. It will then go through capillary reaction. The liquid containing the analyte and the antigen moves across the antibody field. Antibodies on the test line and the control line will capture the antibodies in the aggregate and they will form the solid red line. So you have a natural control line and you have the test line. If the test line goes red and solid, then you've got a positive result. It's picked up the bed bug antigens. So the scientific results. So again, there were a lot of trials done with this product to get it to where it is for it to be suitable to be out on the market. So time on the surface is a significant factor. So the more time you're swabbing, the more likely you're going to be picking up bed bug residue. The number of bed bugs can be a significant factor as well. If there are a lot of bed bugs in the area, then you're going to pick up a lot more antigen. So it's going to be a lot easier, a lot quicker. Now, the other thing I'm going to say, just while I've got us here, if you go into a site and you see bed bugs running about and there's lots of bed bug activity, you don't need to use this test. You don't need to confirm there's bed bugs there, you can see it. So again, these are just the different trial results and these were carried out um, in 2020. So this is on the paper by Alexander Coe and Dan Queen Clough. And what it shows is that the overall testing accuracy when the threshold of the product is 80%, it came at 92.66, which has been rounded up to 92.7% detection accuracy. So the whole thing with our true detects is it's for pest controllers seeking a scientific rapid response to potential bed bug infestations. This is another tool in your toolbox. This is something scientific to back up what you're doing. It's also intrus not intrusive. It can be quickly done without throwing the room apart, having to wait for people to leave the room or in occupied rooms, get permission to go in. It's a quick swabbing. There's no turning beds open and that sort of monarchy. So it's a really, really useful product. So, Thank you ever so much. That's probably been short but sweet. Um, any questions? Fabulous. Do you know what? It's a good job. Uh, I mean, you finished a good 20 minutes early, but we've got lots of questions. So that's Fantastic. like, that, yeah. that, that's good. So um, always a, a great sign. Um, so oh, I know you can probably see them, but you know, I want to get involved. I need to have a job yeah. to do. So yeah, I'm going to read them out for you. Um, <laughs> so um, if a bed bug travels 30 metres for a feed, will it go back to its original harbourage after a feed or look for a nearer site after feeding? Generally, what you find with bed bugs, they will go back to their original harbourage. As rule of thumb, they will generally, generally do that. 
Yeah, it's a bit like me when I go out for a meal of an evening. I like to go back to my original Harbridge. I don't like exactly. Going. Exactly. You, you go where you're familiar, don't you? But yeah, they would generally go back to the original Harbridge. Great, good stuff. Um, also, so uh, is there are there, are there any sex pheromones for bed bugs? Where can we get them if there are? Um, that's very good. I'm sure there are sex pheromones out there. You really want to get onto somebody who's producing monitors. Um, the, the problem with pheromones, and I know you might have done some work with this at some time now, I did field trials many years ago, is when you're using a pheromone or a chiromone, it's actually keeping that stable. So you, what you generally find with the, the ones that they were trying for bed bugs, now this is going back, I think I did this about 11 years ago, mm -hmm. it was the stability of a pheromone. And you didn't get more, more than sort of five to seven days stability at the time. Mm -hmm. which yeah then it become pretty inert very quickly and and not not working yeah because we were using them for uh, moth control a fair amount don't we but yeah, yeah the same which are, which are very again they've been long established and they've been there a long time and even that technology has changed quite a lot in, in sort of our time in the industry as well yeah no indeed I remember that messy powder we used to use but anyway it's not talk about, I get carried away I start talking about things <laughs> we'll, we'll go off on tangents as usual <laughs> yeah. um so um, Ali's asked also, what is the coverage? Oh, hang on a minute. People are, questions keep coming in and then pushing my screen back. So here we go. What is the coverage area of the sticky board monitors? So again, it, it's more where you place sticky board monitors. But again, sticky board monitors, what, what attracts a bed bug? Bed bugs feed on blood. So just putting down a sticky monitor, it's what we call a total blunder trap. You're hoping that for some reason the insects could walk across it. Yeah. Um, Again, going back when I first started, all we had were blunder traps. Mm -hmm. um, and what you find with the traps that are out there, you get minimum success. Sometimes you'll pick them up, sometimes you won't. And it again becomes the costly time of invest in inspection, mm -hmm. turning them over. Whereas if you can do a swab very quickly mm -hmm. and get a result within five minutes, it is saving time. Yeah, indeed. Yeah, those blund the blunder traps. I mean, for any insect, but yeah, bed bugs. You know, do you better say, "Oh, I haven't caught anything on it, so you haven't got a problem." Oh, that's a tricky ground. That's not something yeah. to do, is it? It's great for casual intruders around doorways and wall floor junctions where things are just going to naturally move. But yeah. when you've got something like a bed bug that's going to be harboring in all different areas, then no. Yeah, uh, I mean, a really very serious question here from David: Is there a furlough scheme if we get a positive test for the true dext? <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah. It's that, or if the two lines on, you have it. Congratulations, yeah. you have it. Yeah. Bed bug, aren't you? So I got, I got that joke. Apparently, I missed one in the fox one, so um, yeah, 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 yeah. I had to mention that. But I, I got that. So I mean, we still got sixteen questions in here. So blind me, everyone's uh, everyone always gets excited about bed bugs. I think we all like talking about them, and yeah. obviously a lot of the stuff you've brought up is making people, uh, yeah, get those questions in. So that's good. Uh, Colin, is it better to swab one area or multiple areas with one swab? Right. So with your swab, what I would do, the areas you're usually going to inspect of a bed where the typical movement areas of bed bugs. So the back of your headboard, around your mattress seams, mm -hmm. your bed frame, your bed frame base if you want to. These are all areas inside the drawers or lockers, um, maybe along the um, skirting board at the top if there's gaps in it where they could be heartbreaking is all good areas so it's traditional areas there's no point going and swabbing the middle of the duvet mm -hmm. or going and swabbing the bathroom you're not gonna you're not gonna get bed bugs in there so you're gonna get a negative result so you've got to look at the areas where bed bugs are going to traditionally be harboring and moving yeah. which is generally going to be around where the host is going to be which is your bed so it's the traditional areas you would inspect just give them a quick swab Great. Yeah, I suppose you've got to think about um, cost, obviously. But uh, if, say, you know, there's an infestation, you can see it, that it's on the bed, you maybe don't necessarily need the swab. But you think, OK, mm -hmm. actually, I know they're here. Let's do some testing, you know, over by the cabinets or over by, you know, that drawer over there with lots of shoes in it to try and yeah. get. I mean, obviously, you've got to think about cost and whether you want to do that. But you could probably, you know, make sure it hasn't extended anywhere else. But there's the, the way to look at it as well. There's different ways to incorporate this into what you do. Like if you walk into room and bed bugs are there, as I've said, it, it, it's pointless. I can verify what I already know. Okay. It's for those situations, and we, we get situated people who are looking after accommodation 
holiday parks, travel places, hotels, where someone's coming in, I, I'm getting bit and I want my money back. You go in and do a thorough inspection, but on top of this, you can say, look, I found nothing. This is scientifically proven that there's nothing there. Mm-hmm. It gives that for early detection or before when we used to go in and do precautionary room inspections where we'd get your rooms from the hotel and it'd be hard getting into some or that one's still occupied. Mm-hmm. You can't come in because they're out. Yeah. But now you can go in with housekeeping, just do a few swabs, not intrusive, not destroy the room. It's there. So yeah. there's loads of ways to look at it. It's something that I recommend getting some. And go out and use it, play with it, see how it fits in, work out how it fits in your business model. Yeah, absolutely. It it's not for every situation because if we've got bed bugs, we don't worry it. My 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 special one, I wish I had this back in the day when I was dealing with para, my um delusion parasitosis, because it was always, oh, I'm getting bitten by bed bugs. You're not getting bitten by bed bugs, but and now science is saying it, and that 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 really helps. That's so, very true. That's a good point. Yeah, because it's yeah. um yeah, we get a lot of that where you know, if I've got a case going on at the moment, I'm trying to help a member out with where you know a customer is like, there are definitely bed bugs here, and they're like, there's definitely not, you know, and it's yeah. just back and forth and back and forth. So you can get this get a swab out, everyone's like, Oh, I feel better. There's a swab, you know. Yeah. Um it's it's, it's, it's uh, people if you trust it, the COVID thing, we trust it, and also pregnancy test. It's the same thing, isn't it? Yeah, it's a tested all oh, it's science, and that's that's what it is. Great. Um, I've got a question about resistance here. Uh, um, and are there any known? So, is there any known resistance to any of the insecticides we use in pest control that we use to treat bed bug infestations? If so, where can we get info? Right. That's a really, really good question. Yeah. Maybe, maybe, we'll, maybe, well, maybe it can be linked. But yeah, if you could do a, a brief little, you know, you could go here. Yes. Right. No. So the main thing with looking at it, a lot of the time, yeah, and it was brilliant. The actual bite insect webinar that you guys did not too long ago we talked about the different types of resistance um and yet you're going to get behavioral resistance where insects move away the most important thing when you're doing any sort of treatment any bed bug treatment is that you alternate your active ingredient you alternate your product because if you just keep using the same product that's when you can cause resistance so it's important to know a lot of it's trial and error. There's lots of different ways to treat bed bugs, mm-hmm. not just chemical. We can use heat, we can use steam, and we can use them all in conjunction together. Yeah. And things as well, like diatomaceous earth. Mm-hmm. Not going to solve the problem on its own, but if you put it in trunking and areas where they can travel, it's going to reduce populations. It's all, again, it's integrated pest management, isn't it? It is. It is, um, like you say, it's a big, uh, a bit, a big topic, and uh, there's loads of uh, YouTube channels. Are we do? So we've done bed bug uh, webinars, and I know you guys have a lot of information. So yeah, just do. That was from. Uh, oh, I've lost the name now. So again, all these. There's 19 questions in there. I'm like, we've got, we've got some minutes left, but I don't know whether we're going to get through 19. But we'll do what we can. I'll stop babbling so much and asking you questions off of questions, and I'll try and get as many of these done. So um, Terry said. Uh, he's heard that the test can get confused with other insect av- activity, especially carpet beetles. Is that true? Right. Okay. So this is where the five minutes comes in. So you need to get your four drops in quick succession. Boom, boom, boom. Five minutes. You then read your result. Now your result can come up quicker than five minutes. Brilliant. But you give it to five minutes. Once you go over that five minute threshold. Sometimes it can get confused with the antibodies from varied carpet beetle larvae. So, okay. yes. Great. But also an interesting thing as well, every now and then canine detection picks them up as well. Okay. Because it's the antigens, they're very, very similar. Yeah, so you said like that, that follow the instructions yeah. comes with everything. It's like everything, yeah. Just look for your five minutes job done from that one. Yeah, move my camera, there we go. Um, great, good stuff. Um, so are there any known false positives or false negatives to common substances found in hotel rooms? I don't know what substances mean. Right, no, because it, it's it's the antigens it's picking up. Mm-hmm. Now, with any test, as we knew with the, the COVID test and pregnancy test, sometimes you'll get a false positive, sometimes you'll get a false negative, but they're very, very unlikely. So 
other substances. No, the only thing is if we wait longer than five minute, minutes and we saw somewhere where very carpet beetle larvae have been, mm-hmm. then it's possible that that will do that. But in general, no. Mm-hmm. If you're swapping the correct areas, and as you rightly said, that following the label, following the instruction, like our mantra is pest controllers, mm-hmm. then no, it shouldn't be an issue. Yeah. I mean, not to promote any kind of sales here or anything, but would it be possibly sometimes uh, advantageous to do two swabs in one place just so that you can you can compare the results? And if they're both the same, you know, you've got the same or do you not really think that's needed? No, I don't think it's needed because you're going to swab the areas where once you've got a positive, you've got bed bugs in that room, that room can be treated. Um, the other the other thing it can be great to is going back to sales, surveyors going in it's a quick way for a surveyor to do a survey to up handing rooms that way um and it can be used in conjunction so you can use it in conjunction with your dog teams mm-hmm. you can use it to verify or one to verify the other mm-hmm. yeah great um uh, how does trudex a different differentiate oh here we go differentiate between historic bed bug activity um before you know successful treatment and current activity right so as i said it's not a verification tool so you can't verify it after treatment if you've got somebody saying they've been bitten you're going into a room or you're just checking rooms then you'll swab it the thing with the antigens that these bed bugs leave they are live for up to 90 days mm-hmm. so that, that's the problem with verification and as I've said, if you're waiting 90 days and that room is being let, bed bugs can be reintroduced. And as we said, in optimum conditions, their life cycles turned over in 37 days. So it's not great to wait that period of time to do it. So yeah. this is only an early detection tool. It's not for any other purpose. Early detection, as the uh, um, title of the presentation will dictate, yeah, early detection. Um, are they available in the amateur market? Terry asks. No, no, they're not. They're not an amateur product. They're a professional product. Great. I think everyone will be pleased to hear that. Um, so uh, how old can the residues be? You might have answered that, but yeah, so it's the thing. The bed bugs are going to be when there's live bed bugs, they're going to continuously leaving antigens. Mm-hmm. Now the good thing is a dead bug, <laughs> a dead bed bug is a tongue twister now on that. A dead bed bug doesn't leave a residue, it stops producing antigens when it dies like with everything its whole cycle shuts down Mm -hmm. however antigens will sit in situ for up to 90 days okay great there's a few questions in here that are very similar to those questions you just had about you know how old does the activity need to be so i won't go over those yet but like uh uh, hazel did i'm sure you'll put your contact details in the chat section afterwards if people want to chat to you a bit more about it um but andy here says if spotting's found or reported is it best to swab these areas to receive a more accurate result so again if you've got spotting in an area then that's a really good signal that you saw you've got bed bugs isn't it yeah. however if you're not finding the bed bugs yeah swab that area because they're traveling in that area but swab all those areas we've already talked about our head yeah. bugs, our frames our mattress beading lockers all that all done in the swab, nice long strokes, try and pick up as much stuff that could be there as possible mm-hmm. and then do it that way. Like you say, if there are signs of bed bugs, the drop-ins, skin casts, nymphs, adults, yeah. you've got the sign. You don't need exactly. to exactly you've, you've, you've got justification that there's bed bugs there. Great. Um, some people are asking about costs, but we like, don't like to talk about costs too much on here. But again, you'll put your contact details in there. Say, your website. Ma- manufacturing that, they need to talk to a distributor. There no, we, I'm not. I'm, there not we go. To, I'm not allowed to talk to about money. That's it. We we tell you off. They tell you off. Everyone tells you off. So yeah, yeah. go and have a chat to you. And yes. I'm like, carry on. It's a pound. You know, it's yeah. yeah. <laughs> Good check. Great. Um, is it available in Ireland? David asked. Um, I yes, I think it will be through a distributor. Yes. Yeah. It will, it will be available. It will be come to Ireland. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, Carl's asked about how many tests to use, but again, I think you've answered. I think some of these questions have come through before. Uh, yeah, what, what we can say as well. So if you were doing it for traditional monitoring purposes, instead of doing full room inspections, where you, you do your quarterly inspections just as a tick box, you can swab up to five rooms mm-hmm. before you then break and do the test. So if it comes negative, you know those five are negative. The only downside on that 
is if you get a positive hit, you've then got to go back and reswap rooms. So yeah. ideally, um, when you're looking, especially when you're looking for areas where there's been a complaint of a bite, and we all do it in hotel rooms, we do like the three above, the money either side, the three below. So you can use it from that point of view as well. Mm-hmm. Great. Um, I'm guessing there's some like training. Is there a training video on your website about so, how to use this for refresh people? Yeah, yeah. So again, there's um, a barcode on the actual true to text box that will show you what to do step by step, and there's step and step instructions with it. But um, it is very, very simple. And as somebody rightly said, who needs to be furloughed if they get bad bugs. It's very much like doing a COVID test that you're not sticking out your nose, you're swabbing. Mm-hmm. And it's the same, you're breaking the fluid, you're dropping on your thing, you're waiting five minutes to get your result. Great. Um, like I said, yeah, those instructions are going to be important to people because this is a new new concept, you know, it's a new tool yeah. completely, you know, so yeah. yeah. Oh, and it, it's always follow instructions, always following the label. <laughs> Great. Right. Um, so I'm just going through the question to make sure because again, there's quite a few repeated ones, uh, mm-hmm. some about cost, but we've already said you go to your supplier. Um, uh, here, so have you ever have you any experience with black light for detection? Compare this to the swab test. So black light, that's going back to doing the sort of similar to the UV, isn't it? Um, and there were black light torches out. Again, I'm thinking about I think they first came in about 12, 10, 12 years ago. So mm-hmm. no, we, we tried them. Um, again, it's different things for different work. But if you're going using black light, you need it to be dark. You need it to be ideal conditions. You don't want somewhere that's been thoroughly cleaned, because again, it will pick up that. So that's the beauty of this. There's none of that monkeying about. We're just swabbing, doing a test. Five minutes later, we've got positive or a negative. Yeah, excellent. Um... Got a lot of questions in here that can be big, big uh, answers, you know, things about bed bugs and, you know. Well, cool. Yeah, the biology stuff, wicked. Yeah, biology stuff, insecticide stuff, which, again, we could be here for all day on that. So I'm just trying to go through. Um, so Davina has asked about a freshly laundered linen um, that has been previously exposed to be- a bed bug infestation. I'm guessing the swabs won't pick up on that, would it? Again, if it's freshly laundered, it depends on the temperature, but again, the whole washing process the um, brain's gone detergent that will break down and remove antigens the other thing you're not swabbing linen why would you swab the middle of the bed it's not the areas they're going to be harboring them or moving them there's going to be very little movement on the linen they're going to get straight on the host at the quickest point so that's it and usually as we know traditionally because of co2 and heat it's going to be around the head the shoulders down the back front torso Okay, great. Yeah, as you said, yeah, the linen you wouldn't, I said you'd just launder it, you wouldn't really need to do that. If they're going to be on there, they're going to be around the mattress. So, yeah, that's good. You'll see it quite obviously, aren't you? So, yeah. Yeah. Um, Great. Again, for people asking about what kind of insecticides to use, and that's kind of going into general chat about bed bugs, which again, we've got two minutes left. So, I don't know if we've got time for that. (laughs) Have a look. Firstly, big rule make sure that the target pest is on the label that you're using Mm -hmm. and also look at the areas you can treat because you cannot spray a lot of chemicals obviously on mattresses or anywhere that's going to have human contact Mm -hmm. so that needs to be taken into scale as i said look at your products and rotate your products as well don't just stick to one yeah yeah absolutely i mean bed bugs is such a challenge to deal with them like we you've uh you know um alluded to is that depending on where they are what the room layout is how messy the room is what yeah. you know whether there is resistance and whether you know they've got that you're not necessarily going to know so it's switching yeah. your products it's it's tricky um i mean what do you say about bed bugs um there's a question here about you know behind for example a wooden panel that's behind wallpapers and you know things like that like chemical treatment yeah Again, you, you can get them in behind panelling, especially in tapestries. You get them in behind mirrors, don't you? You get them in behind paint pictures in the frames of paintings. Um, but the main thing with them, as we said from the start, bed bugs need to feed on blood, not only to survive, but mm-hmm. also they need to um, have that in order to mold to get to the next lifestyle stage. So they're going to be coming where the host is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Nature-wise as well, 
especially low level, they can be as close to the host. And generally, then when the population builds, is when you get further spread because your niche, your harborage is taken up. So you have to move out to less areas and travel down to feed, don't you? So, yeah. No, yeah. Absolutely. I mean, on, on that note, um, my last question from Rob, because we are at time now, but just to finish on that, at uh, what stage do the bed bugs start to feed for themselves rather than on a, the blood provided by the adults? So generally what you find, again, is your first instar nymph when it hatches out the egg, you'll find that it will actually feed on the droppings when it? it's the, the fresh blood as it's treated by the adult. They sort of walk along. Lovely, mm -hmm. isn't it? <laughs> uh, but by the time they've had their first molt and they get into second instar, they can then start feeding. Um, back in, in, in my training days, before COVID, I used to have my own bed bug culture and part of the training was I used to feed my of bed bugs. did. <laughs> on that one. Yeah, I know, no lice and that, no lice. Yeah. So, yeah. No, it's good. It's good. Yeah. Great. I mean, I could, I could I could literally be on another hour talking about bed bugs, but yeah, we have to stop it somewhere. But great. I mean, that's probably the most questions we've had all year on any of our forums. And so, yeah, good topic, Richard. Whenever you want to cover it again, please do. It's amazing. And again, thank you very much. Thanks ever so much. Thanks, everybody, for listening. Sorry about the sound earlier. <laughs> no, it was good. It was good. Um, to everybody, I think there's four questions open that I didn't manage to get to because I think either A, they're quite big answers, but Richard, you'll be able to maybe have a look for us while the other presenter's on and just do some typey-typey answers. Yeah, if yeah, I will do that for you. That'd be great, um, just so then we can... If we, if we know which ones they are. Great, um, indeed. Um, have a nose, but I'll say bye for now and thank you very much. Thanks, now. See you, bye-bye.